What's up, y'all? I'm Will here with Schedule Fly, and this is the Restaurant Owners Uncorked podcast, one of the highest rated hospitality podcasts in the world, brought to you by us at Schedule Fly. We provide a very simple web based restaurant employee scheduling software backed by legendary customer service. If you're on pencil and paper or Excel, or you're on some software with tons of bells and whistles and features you don't need or use, ScheduleFly is the perfect place for you. Easy to use, point, click, and go, and we'll take great care of you. ScheduleFly.com, free trial, check it out. All right, y'all, check it out. Stick is our sponsor, connectwithstick.com. This is an incredible text and marketing tool. So check this out. Engage your customers, drive foot traffic, and increase sales at your bar, your restaurant, your store with Stick. Your targeted messages Reach your audience instantly, promoting special offers and events. Look, 98% of texts are seen within three minutes. So this thing is simple and it's effective and it works. Elevate your marketing strategy and watch your customer base grow with the most direct way to connect with your customers through text. Start today and see results on the very first text. Stick is a better way to connect with your customers and the easiest way to increase your sales, www.connectwithstick.com. And again, that's www.connectwithstick.com. Folks, this is an awesome sponsor. It's an awesome business. We at ScheduleFly know them well. Uh, We know that the results are there. This is a highly effective tool, and it's run by a business run by great people. Check them out, connectwithstick.com. All right, y'all, uh, get ready to talk about some Italian beef. Um, this was such a fun conversation with Casey and her family. Her father started Pops Beef in 1980. These are my favorite types of stories because this is a family-run business, multi-generation. We're now 44 years into this business. They're outside of, you know, sort of the Chicago area, um, upstate Indiana, 16 locations, franchised, growing, uh, but growing deliberately and intentionally and at the right pace and just love and passion throughout decades of this business and a, a incredible story, a, just a fun lady to talk to. So, Enjoy this episode, and when you're up around Chicago, check out Pops Beef. More episodes coming soon. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you very much. Casey, do, do me a favor. Introduce yourself real quick. Hi, my name is Casey Redeshansky. I am a business owner of Pops Italian Beef and Sausage. Uh, this year, we're going into 44 years of business, so it's exciting. It's been fun. Obviously, that's a little bit older than I am, so it is a family-run business, and I'm excited to be here to talk to you today. I'm excited too. This is a really cool thing. And I read your story, you know, on your website. So, but with technology being interesting, listen, you're, you're talking to a guy who uses this. I this love is my, it. This is my phone to this day. So yes, I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the tech stuff, even though I'm a, an owner of a technology business. But um, yeah. uh, so, well, look, I, I had not heard, you know, I'm in North Carolina um, mm-hmm. and I had not heard of Pops Beef. I went to your website. If I'm correct, you have, I think, 16 locations now in and around the Chicago area. And what a cool, cool story. So was it your dad that started the business back in 1980? 80. Yeah. He's Pops. He's my Pops. So he's pop. um, yeah, he started it. It was his high school nickname. So he started it. Uh, he was 19 years old when he started it. Started it as a true family business. I mean, my grandpa was the one slicing the beef in the back. My grandma was the one taking orders. And then his sister um, was the fry girl. So um, truly started family. And then I think his first employee was like a buddy from high school. <laughs> and so uh, just a fun story. It's fun to see the generations. You know, obviously now I have little kids. And so the you know, the kids from where, you know, when it used to be me coming in there when I was little, eating the hot dogs and the French fries. Now it's my kids. And so um, it's been cool, not only our family generationally, but, you know, as I've worked there and gotten to know a lot of the customers and families and seen their kids now. So it, it, it's really, really cool to grow up in an atmosphere like that. Well, you know, you've, you've answered, there's this, these podcasts are always, it's just a conversation, right? It's just, yeah. a com- I don't ever come with like a list of questions. I don't have a lightning round or anything. We just talk about hospitality, but I always, the one question I always ask is 
how and when did you get started in hospitality? So we already know that answer. You got yeah. started in it like when you were born. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Out of the womb. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll talk about that. Talk about growing up yeah. in this business. And is it something that you knew you wanted to do? Or did you have other designs on life, but st stuck with it? Or how did this all come to be? So um, I would say originally it wasn't a choice. <laughs> you know, it was almost a punishment. I don't mean to say that in, in a bad way, I guess. Um, but my dad, you know, truly grew up from the ground up. And so, as you know, I'm sure talking to other restaurants, I mean, your first years, you don't leave, you know, and you, he, he was there bell to bell. And so, um, you know, there's no days off, you know, I think he takes off four days a year, you know, the big holidays, but, um, it was him for many, many years. And so my childhood, you know, my mom was obviously the one that stayed home with us. And my dad was the one that ran the restaurant. And that's, I, truly believe why it's so successful today. Um, and then, you know, as we got older, I have two other sisters and a brother. So it was kind of like, um, you know, someone didn't show up for work. Who's coming in, you know, after you got, after you went to school was who's coming in to work. And so we all joked about it. Um, now me and my brother are currently the only two in the restaurant. My other two sisters have chosen other professions and I, I, I always say it's nobody's dream job. I don't think to work the line at a fast, casual restaurant. Um, but I think it's important. I think that so many, I always say that my children will absolutely work in hospitality. I think it teaches so many amazing things that people and kids especially are missing out. It teaches, you know, humility and how to talk to people and just a lot of things that I just think we need as a society. And so um, I, I, I love it for that reason. Uh, and I love the talk talking to so many different people, the customers, um, employees are like family. I mean, we're very lucky in a restaurant industry. You don't see the longevity of employees a lot of time. Um, we've, we have a good handful of people that have been with us 20 plus years, which is incredible. Um, and they're truly family. And so that aspect of it, I love, but of course in the restaurant industry, there's a lot of things that are tough especially when you see different pandemics we've gone through um, just, you know, the economy, whether the economy is doing well or not. Well, you know, just a lot of, a lot of things. And like I said, at the end of the day, there's not no days off in restaurants. And so that's, you know, that's been hard for, for our family and, you know, just personally, it's hard. I'm a, I'm a believer that everybody should work. You know, when you're a teenager at some point, when Amen. you're of age, wherever you are, you should work in a restaurant for, you know, it, that Agreed. should be a job that everybody, <laughs> like, I'm not big on like forcing, you know, but boy, it would be nice if everybody just kind of took it upon themselves to make sure their kids had a job in a restaurant because absolutely, it will, all the things you mentioned, the humility, the, the interpersonal relationship building that, and quite frankly, yeah. these days, you know, you have kids there, they don't talk on the phone. They, yeah. Yeah. you know, they text, they Snapchat, whatever. So having to sit there and look somebody in the eyes, yeah. um, smile, thank them, be present, make them feel welcome. These are skill sets that are interchangeable in anything that you do. And, and quite frankly, in today's world, unfortunately, the bar is so low for being able to impress somebody with just your interpersonal skills and your presence. So unfortunately, it's so low. But then fortunately, if you understand that, you give yourself this huge advantage in life, I feel like. Because if, you know, I'm a teenager who actually is able to just accomplish those things that maybe we would have thought are kind of sort of basic life skill sets, but because of all this technology that's been not to their fault, just thrown in their faces for so long now, they don't have that. And, you know, I, I realized this last summer, my daughter's, uh, she's 20. So last summer she's 19 and she's working in this restaurant and she was a host and uh, she had to answer the phone. And I'm like, you know, this is really the first time you've ever actually talked on the phone like like a lot, right? She's like, yeah. I mean, like, you know, she didn't, we didn't have a house phone growing up. Like you didn't have to answer the phone when somebody called, you know? Right. And so, <laughs> but there are these things that we, we're losing them, but we miss them. And we know, we know they're important. Even when we're young and we didn't grow up with them, we, we know it when we see it. Right. So, yeah. um, I, I think that there's so much that comes along with, with what you said about working in hospitality, and then it also teaches you this amazing skill set of being able to handle like a lot of different stuff happening at one time, which is can be very challenging. I don't think I have that skill set. So I always 
like I always admire people like you and your dad and your family for for doing what you do because we all want and need hospitality. But there's only a few of you that really have it in your DNA to pull it off and like keep your sanity. So congratulations yes. on that. Keeping my sanity is questionable at times, but thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, and it and it is. I think in a restaurant, truly family, especially you wear a lot of hats. Um, so not only, you know, in the restaurant, of course, when things are on fire and, you know, you got to line out the door and you're trying to get those orders done, but also on the back end as well, you know, with having 16 restaurants and what does that look like? And, you know, obviously each restaurant is individually owned. We are a franchise. And so not only that, but dealing with the different personalities of the franchisees and kind of how they run their business. Um, it was interesting how we started, uh, with multiple locations where we were license agreement, we weren't a franchise. And so, um, we had no royalty structure. You know, it was kind of, it started out like a, a friend wanted to open a location and uncle wanted to open location and then they had sold off. And, and it's cool. The rest, uh, the groups of, of restaurants, they're family owned as well. So the one, the one guy actually, we have two, three locations, excuse me, in Indiana. Um, he has 10 children and now four of his children own locations, which is really cool. Um, we have a group of three brothers. They each own a restaurant, but um, just kind of going back to personalities and, um, you know, in 2010, we officially became a franchise. And so, you know, they all kind of ran their restaurants, although it was the same umbrella brand menu, logo, all the same things. They truly kind of were in their town, um, mom and pop shops, like I said, although we had all the same menu items and stuff. So kind of, you know, going from a running a mom and pop shop under the brand pops, and then kind of now fast forward to 2024 and trying to do things, you know, so you are truly a brand and, you know, when they go to one location, uh, they get that same experience at the next location. So that's also been interesting trying to navigate that. Um, because of course everyone runs their restaurants a little different. And so I think as you get bigger, you know, obviously the problems you had when you were smaller are just now magnified. <laughs> so, you know, and looking to minimize all those before you get too big, because I think a lot of brands get too big, too fast, and then the wheels kind of fall off. And so there's been a lot, there's been a lot. And then of course, you know, just family itself. My dad had one vision, I have another. And so trying to marry those two together to really, um, you know, keep what we love about our brand, still our brand is, has been another thing to navigate. So like you said, kind of, it is, it is a lot. And, you know, whether you're talking about inside the restaurant or outside, um, restaurants are, they're fun. They're, they are fun, but you, you're wearing a lot of hats at all times. You're wearing a lot of hats at all times. Talk, talk about your dad's vision, your vision, the confluence yeah. of those visions, like where they intersect. And then, you know, some of the things that where, you know, it, as it should be, you know, you have, you have different things you want to do because you grew up at a different time and you have a right. different approach, but what, what, what are the things that are just, you know, core anchors to what pops is? And then what are the, some yeah. of the things where y'all, you, he might think one way and you think a different way. I think, um, at the base of our kind of like our foundation and where we started and why we started is community. We are so community focused. And, um, when I say, you know, mom and pop shops within each of the towns that we operate our restaurants in, uh, giving back is always huge for us. Um, whether it's, you know, the local baseball, t-ball, softball team, um, the schools, the churches, the, you know, just really getting to know your community and knowing their names and they're not just a customer kind of, I, I know I keep going back to it, but they're family. And so, um, you know, treating your customers like family. And so, so, like I said, community give back, uh, customers being like family, employees being like family. I think just treating people well, <laughs> you know, being being nice, having a smile on your face, um, being excited to be there. I mean, like I said, it's not always easy in restaurants. It's not always excited to have that trickle down to your employees, but um, that's important, you know. And so I think that my dad and I have the same vision for wanting to keep that at all of our restaurants. But where it gets hard is. So my dad, I mean, is truly like your old school, never left for the first X amount of years. Um, he's still, he's 60, his birthday was, his birthday was on Sunday. He's 67, 68, but he still goes in every morning to wash the windows um, because he thinks when the customer first walks in the door, the windows are the first thing they see and he's out there pulling weeds in the grass at his location. And so um, where my, my vision is a little different is I think that there's time well spent, but my time is not best spent washing windows. And not that I think that that's not important, um, but to be at your restaurant every day to to grow that, I think that 
I, I don't agree with that. And so to say, especially when we have an established restaurant, I think if you do the proper training and, you know, the things, are, you know, the systems that are in place and your employees are being taught the right way that they should kind of have your vision as well. And that you're able to kind of take a back, you know, seat to the, the front, I mean, the running the day-to-day -day operation and be able to run kind of more of the franchise and maybe your, your social media efforts. I mean, he's, didn't come from a generation for social media. Um, for his first 25 to 30 years, he did no advertising whatsoever. Everything was word of mouth. So where I come in and I see the impact that advertising and social media and the marketing and the branding of our 16 locations, he's still worried about, you know, making the beef sandwich at his one location at, at our corporate location. So that's tough too. And so when I'm not, you know, not in the restaurant, it's almost as if I'm not working, you know, you didn't come to work today. Well, <laughs> you didn't see the eight hours of work I did behind the scenes, that kind of thing. And so, um, of course he's, he's gotten better over the years, but like, again, I think he is just very, if you're not in the restaurant, you're not working. And I'm so much so as I think that there's more important things we can do with our time to be able to grow our business and make it even better. Oh. That makes sense. It makes so much sense. And I love the duality because look, he's, there's working in the business and there's working on the business and right. he is still working in the business and God bless him. I think that's a wonderful thing for him and for that location. And I bet it's, you know, he's 67, he gets up in the morning and that's what he wants to do. And I, I yeah. look, that's, that is awesome. And the pride he puts into that is amazing. Yes. And yes. that's wonderful. That's also very hard to scale and to scale across franchisees and to have that expectation that, well, they should all be, you know, like, and whether he does or not, I don't know. But I mean, like, I love both perspectives. And um, if you are a franchisee, well, gosh, what a great example he's setting for that one that maybe, you know, that you may do the same, or, you know, if you've got three or four locations, um, you know, hopefully you're there a lot and you're, you're leading your team by example, cause he's also doing that. He's, he's showing them what pride and what care in this location is, but you've gone from the one and now you're 16 and I'm, I'm assuming you'll continue to grow. That's the hope. Somebody's yeah. got to be working on this business, not in this business. And this is where you come in and, and, um, you know, it's, it's so cool to have both generations with a different perspective and a different role in the business. Um, you have 16 locations now. Congratulations on, so what are we at? About 44 years in business. So this is phenomenal story, like hard stop. Uh, but you got through a pandemic. You've got this really cool, unique brand and a great story. So what's, are you continuing to add new franchisees or are franchisees continuing to add locations or are, are, are both things happening? Both things are happening. I think what's really cool about our model for our franchise is um, we're very different. So the, our original location is kind of carry out only. So there's no seating, there's no drive through nothing. And then we have another model that's in gas stations, which is really great because we have an automatic customer. So it's like a lot of the truck stops, um, of course, and people getting gas as well. And so they're really upscale gas stations. Um, and so that model works too. We also have your full service where there's seating. There's um, We have ones with we have gambling now in a few of our restaurants. And so it's very diverse. And so, um, yes, we also have, you know, owners opening within our system as well as new ones coming on. Um, I think kind of going back to our, vi not, I guess not vision, but like our foundation, it's got to be a good partnership. And so my dad very much looks for an owner that is going to be in his restaurant. And so not a lot of restaurants these days, not, not, excuse me, not a lot of restaurant owners these days want that, um, you know, early morning, late night, every day. And so I think that that we could chalk that up to why we were slow grow. And like I said, um, we're not going to open for anybody. Our royalty structure is very low. Um, my dad knew what it took to get his restaurant started and to make money in the restaurants and where food costs are these, you know, and kind of what that looks like, especially in this economy right now. Um, and so our royalty structure is low. So there's a lot of perks to our franchise, but um, we're, I guess, more selective than we ever have to make sure it's going to be a good fit that not just anybody's opening our restaurant. Um, and of course in the area, you know, we don't have like those one off, like we wouldn't say someone in Florida, like, yeah, go ahead and open a pop's beef down in Florida. Um, because each location does cook and slice their beef fresh daily. It's another mm -hmm. thing that we're really, you know, it's important. It's not frozen and, you know, it's, it's done fresh and it's done right. And, 
um, even when we were expanding in our area, we'd go to, my dad would go to town to town and beef, of course, our, our restaurant's name is Pop's Beef. And so the Italian beef sandwich. Now, I don't know if you've ever had an Italian beef sandwich, but it's, you know, it's the real slice thin, it's tender, juicy, and then they dunk the whole sandwich in the gravy. And so gravy mm. is 99% water. And so he was going town to town and he's like, this is not right. Why does my beef sandwich taste different here and then different here and worse here and better here? And it came down to the water, right? So certain stores run city water, certain stores run um, well water. And so it was just different. And so to, you know, then put the the water filtration systems in our locations to make sure all the beef tasted the same. And so there's been, you know, it's not, we don't have a commissary where everything's coming from a commissary. So it is cooked and sliced fresh daily at our locations. And so, you know, that's had its own set of problems. So we of course don't want to expand and, you know, say we're opening up all over the place and you do not, you to be able to go to your location in Florida and it, we would still want it to taste like ours in Chicago. And so definitely slow growth and maybe someday, you know, commissary will be a thing for us if we do want to expand um, into, you know, out of our kind of our little circle we have. Um, but yeah. Hmm. I love the water piece of that. I would have never thought of that. So yeah, I don't guess I have, what you don't think of, right? Right. No. Well, cool that you figured it out. I mean, does it, does it <laughs> like, does the filtration, I mean, I bet you, he can yes. still, okay. But can he still taste a little bit of a difference? Absolutely. Or, I mean, yeah. I'll be really honest with you. He can taste it just because he's been doing it for so long. And not only yeah. that, he can tell you almost like who's cooking, who cooked it that day, oh my like gosh. in his lo lo amazing. own location. I know. Yeah. So yeah, he's good at that. <laughs> All right, y'all, check it out. Stick is our sponsor, connectwithstick.com. This is an incredible text and marketing tool. So check this out. Engage your customers, drive foot traffic, and increase sales at your bar, your restaurant, your store with Stick. Your targeted messages reach your audience instantly, promoting special offers and events. Look, 98% of texts are seen within three minutes. So this thing is simple and it's effective and it works. Elevate your marketing strategy and watch your customer base grow with the most direct way to connect with your customers through text. Start today and see results on the very first text. Stick is a better way to connect with your customers and the easiest way to increase your sales www.connectwithstick.com. And again, that's www.connectwithstick.com. Folks, this is an awesome sponsor. It's an awesome business. We at ScheduleFly know them well. Uh, we know that the results are there. This is a highly effective tool, and it's run by a business run by great people. Check them out, connectwithstick.com. Um, well, I think you're wise to be have measured growth uh, there's so many brands that they grow too fast and it gets it's hard to, to manage it effectively and there's right. no consistency across the brand um it it's smart to do that for economic cycles and just a lot of different reasons um do you see this you've got 16 is it the kind of thing where you're kind of growing in concentric circles outside of Chicago or like you mentioned, Florida, did, like there's a lot of people that maybe retire to Florida. Like, are there markets like, do you think of that or like, what does the growth look like if you think over the next five to 10 years? I think it, within our, our market, that's yeah. the, we're kind of like on the outskirts we see are growing. Um, and it's really cool. It's other franchisees within the system that are growing our, yeah. our system. Um, which is kind of a good thing too. I mean, they've done it before they have one. So, you know, for them, to, for us, you know, the training is very minimal because their employees are kind of just, you know, whatever they can share, they can do all the things. Um, I would say that we would not go something as big as an out of market, unless there was a commissary where we would be able to be able to ship the same product that we make up here down there, or mm -hmm. unless it was the same, it was a franchisee that was Re that really knew the business model and knew the product that was going to take it there. And, you know, we were confident that they would be able to give the same product and the same service as they would get in, in Chicago land area. Are there other brands that you learn from or that you admire or that you observe and follow? I love Chick-fil-A. I think everybody <laughs> loves Chick-fil-A these days. Um, 
I think it's the Sundays off, I think is so cool. I think it's so cool yeah. for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I love, you know, they give back to, you know, they, I think mm-hmm. going back to kind of like how they treat their employees like family. I think when you walk in that door, I think they treat you like family. I love that. Um, that's, that's a personal opinion. I just love that model. I think that they've got it, you know, they've got a town pat there. Um, and of course there's brands in our area too. There's other Italian beef, you know, it's funny. So being in the Chicagoland area, you know, kind of everyone's buddies, you know, so my dad is buddies with the guys that own the Italian beef stand down the road, you know, the road. And he grew up with, you know, the Dick Portillo, obviously model Portillo's. I'm not sure if you have that there yet, but they've massively expanded in the past 10 years. And so, yeah, of course, you know, you're always looking what competitors are doing and you're always looking at, you know, kind of how you can be better, but I, I don't know so much to say that, you know, we're trying to compete. Like, I, I don't know. I love the word competitor. I think if you're doing your good job, you know, doing your best job that you can be doing for your restaurant, that your, you know, customers will, like I said, become family and they'll choose you because you are family versus, you know, the guy down the street. Well, you know, you're talking about something we get into a lot on here, which is, I mean, you, you know, you have to serve a good product, but the experience that the customer has is what keeps them coming back. How you Absolutely. make them feel. You know, if you make them feel like family, they go from customer to regular to loyal, avid fan to advocate, you know, who spreads yeah. the pops beef gospel through word of mouth. Like, right? Yeah. Like that's sort of the right. customer Absolutely. life cycle of a great yeah. brand. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I have to ask this because I keep looking over at this thing over your right shoulder, be your own role model. Tell me oh, about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that there are not a lot of women in our industry. Um, there's not a lot of women in the restaurant industry. And so, you know, I feel like a lot of industries you look up to people and kind of who, you know, who do you kind of want to emulate your life after in our industry anyways. And so, um, and, now, and now I have children. And so... I want to set a good example for women in our industry. I want to set a good example for, um, you know, kids in this industry. And so I would like kind of maybe set a different narrative for the person that works in the fast food restaurant. Um, I think that, you know, back in the day was kind of like, oh, it wasn't cool to work at a fast food restaurant. Or Excuse me, back in the day, it kind of was cool to work at a fast food restaurant. Now I don't think it's so much so. And so um, it is cool to work in a fast food restaurant. You know, I I think that um, it's cool to be able to talk to people. It's not a normal desk job. And so um, I, I, I want to set that example and I want that I'm a big sticky note person. And so this is like a big version of a sticky note for me. So if I could live every day, kind of being my own role model and a person that people can look up to, um, then I would say I would, I was doing a good job. Oh, I love that. Uh, more and more women, uh, you know, are entering the industry. Oh, absolutely. And, yes. You know, what a great thing. Um, do you go, like, do you go to... I mean, the NRA, the National Restaurant Association show is in Chicago every year. Do you go to mm-hmm. trade shows and things like that? Or, I mean, do you have time for stuff like that? <laughs> so the NRA, we do go to every year. It's just cool. It's cool to be able to see people. You know, you kind of have your same vendors that you see every year. And um, yeah, you do. I, I do. I, I, <laughs> there are a lot more that I could be in and maybe in a different season in my life. And my kids are a little older. I got four. So they're six, mm-hmm. five, three and new, I have four month old. And so right now my season is just a little, (laughs) we're in a little different hats these days. Um, But again, my season will come for that. And um, I think now just kind of still, you know, nose to the ground and we're, you know, worried about our own restaurants and kind of how to give the best product and, you know, have the best experience in our 16 right now, I think is enough for me. And so I think it'll come, (laughs) come, you know, a time when, when expansion will happen and I can focus more on that. But right now, um, my plate's pretty full. It sounds like it. A four month yeah. old, six, yes. five, three, three. And, and four months. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I st- we stopped at three. I thought, I thought we'd have five kids, three hours. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> so, uh, you get any sleep? that's questionable <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay Depends what right. shift my husband has or i have he usually takes the late shift and i take the early morning shift so does he work um, in the business too no, no okay no which is a good thing probably yeah right you, you get yeah yeah especially with, with little kids you know that's, yes. that's, that's yes. probably a good thing yes, um very good thing. so tell me about one of the things that I, i'm 
personally just really interested in is, and you mentioned this, how it's not, you know, it's, it's not maybe deemed as, as cool now to work in a quick service place or in a restaurant just in general, but, but it is, it isn't a great look. So we have this gap, right? Like you and I know this is a great learning experience and you're going to get mm-hmm. so much out of it. And the kids are like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But if you build, I'm a big culture person. I'm, I'm trying to learn a lot about culture and building the right kind of culture that attracts people because you can do it because, I mean, my son got his first job two years ago and that was at Chick-fil-A. And I, I wanted him to work at Chick-fil-A because I knew what he would learn. Things that he yeah. doesn't know are valuable. He got from that, right? Mm-hmm. So there's like almost like a, actually my youngest son, he's 15. And we just dropped the ball this year and waited too late because he was going to get a summer job there. And they're like, they were, I mean, we're, we're full. So in other words, there's yeah. like competition to work there, right? Yeah, For absolutely. 15 year olds. So they've created something, some kind of a culture where clearly a lot of parents are wanting their kids to be there. Um, hard to do, very hard yeah, to do, oh, but, absolutely. But, but, but doable. So that must be something you think a lot about. And I'm just curious how you try to go about in creating this place where, you know, young people want to be more than maybe they want to be somewhere else. Absolutely. Um, what's re- which is really cool. We, a lot of the kids that work there now are kids of employees that worked there 30 years ago. And so um, I think that a lot of people in the area um, you know, family work there. And so it tells a story. And so those kids are like, Oh, it's cool that I worked at the same place as mom worked or grant, you know, my aunt worked or whatever. So we have a lot of generational employees, which is really cool. Um, we're extremely flexible with kids as far as their schedule goes. Um, you know, some work one day a week and that's okay with us. And so, you know, we're very easy if they need something off, you know, if something comes up, we're very lenient. Um, I, I just think that my dad has always promoted, you know, kids being working on the counter, the restaurant, you know, learning those skills, um, as well as, you know, a friendly face. And so, again, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the family. Um, we've been around for so long. And so I would, th- I kind of think that our restaurant still is cool to work at. Um, but of course, like, I think that flexibility is huge nowadays because kids and these poor kids, they, I mean, we just, you could talk on like a club, right? Club baseball club, you know, whatever. It's all the clubs. It's all the teams. It's all these crazy. I mean, your kid is only allowed to do one thing almost. It sounds like from birth and you know, my oldest is six or whatever. And it's like, Oh, you didn't sign her up for X, Y, Z yet. And I'm like, she's six, you know, she's doing park district stuff. And so they're like, Oh, you know, they start these club teams so early, but anyways, being flexible and be able to just, even if they can only work a Sunday or whatever that it looks like a Saturday, they don't have games and, or one night shift a week, you know, just being able to get their kind of feet wet in it is, you know, what we, what we want, you know, we're not like, Oh, you have to guarantee us three, four, five days, whatever that looks like. So flexibility. And then of course, you know, just creating that good fun atmosphere. Um, you know, it's, it's dealing with customers. It's, you got to make it light. It's not, you know, you screw up someone's hot dog. It's not the end of the world. It is maybe at, in that moment, but they learn, you know, they learned how to apologize. They learned what it looks like, you know, to, to interact with people, good and bad. So, um, so it's, yes. yeah. Yes. L- let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. We went through all that high yeah. pressure. Got If you don't kick us up, you don't sign up for the year round club soccer by eight, yeah. five and a half years old, <laughs> you'll never play soccer in your life. So like, yeah. don't fall for it is bull like i mean there i get like there are people good for you if that's what you, but oh yeah. my goodness the pressure and the money that I comes know. along with that the is money. so intense and these kids are under so much pressure these days from so many angles and add social media on top of that like enough like it's just too enough. much it's it's just crazy so uh there's a lot of that out there but um yeah, luckily we kind of, you know, removed ourselves from that and made that decision years ago. And, you know, so none of my kids are going to the Olympics. Uh, (laughs) And that's okay. They're fine. 
<laughs> you know, like, yeah, right. Like they well, don't I feel it's good <laughs> for kids to be well-rounded these days. I see, yeah. see so many kids that that's all they can do. They can only play baseball. They can only play soccer, whatever it is. And then, you know, they get to 16, get 17 out. and they're burnt out. Yes. Yeah, you know, and then out. the parents are upset. They put all this money and they, they were mm-hmm. going to get this college scholarship. And I'm kind of like, you know, you could have worked at the local restaurant and probably picked up way more, a better skill set for college or for your job after college. Then I think that these kids do. And not to say again, like you said, if that's the path that they want to take and they're dedicated and it's their choice, if that's their amazing. Choice. Yeah. Exactly. Not the parent's choice. And yeah. so, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, good, good. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I'm trying, gosh, I really need to, I need to get to Chicago at some point. Please it's do. A little while. Come visit us. I want to come to a pop's beef. See, I, Please, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a red meat like fanatic. Like I eat red meat like twice a day. So that's great. Uh, we're, we're your guy. <laughs> I, I, you're kind of like you know you're like you're talking yes. my language. Yes. Like, yes. Um, yes. Well, but it's funny. So I don't know. Like you come and I don't know you'd order it right because my husband is actually from South Carolina and so um, he's a transplant. And so the first time he had a, a beef sandwich, he had no, you know, no clue. Like, do you put ketchup on it? Do you put mustard on it? Like, kind of like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're messing it up. And so you transplant, you know, like people that are not used to the Italian beef sandwich. I'm always like, let me order it for you. You know, we make our homemade hot jardinier, which I know in your neck of the woods, they don't even know what jardinier is. I go and visit what my is in-laws. It? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, okay. So it's like a pickle. Oh, gosh. I'm not, I'm going to screw up in the definition of it, but it's almost kind of like a pickled hot peppers. Um, it's really cool. We use the same spices that we use to cook our beef to to kind of put this mix together. And it's jalapeno, celery, it's like red pepper flakes in an oil, and it kind of marries the juices together of the beef sandwich to give it this pick and it is awesome. It's amazing. Um, but we also have sweet peppers and we have mild jardinier, which is obviously not, but we make it in house. It's fresh. It's like I said, it's like the whipped cream on top of a Sunday. <laughs> it's mm. like, you can't have the beef sandwich without the jardinier. And so, um, so if you're ever there, come with someone that knows what they're going to order you <laughs> because I'm not too sure. Um, or like my in-laws, when they come, they get a hot dog and they put, you know, chili and cheese and relish and kind of like goofy stuff. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You need a Chicago dog. So it's funny when people aren't from the Chicagoland or, uh, area come to our restaurant and and, and order <laughs> well, what they so... think that they should get. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny you said that because I was just sitting there thinking chili and cheese. Heck yeah. Like that's how I roll. So where <laughs> where where is your husband from? In South Carolina. You would never know in a million years. So it's a really tiny town called Manetta, South Carolina. It's actually 25 minutes across the Augusta, Georgia border. Okay. So it's right, you know, we fly into Augusta, you know, when we go visit. And then, um, but it's, I'll never forget when I went to go visit him, I got no cell phone service. So I'm like, where are you taking me? You know, and I'm from Chicago. And so um, I've never, I've never seen, (laughs) I've never seen towns like that before. And so it's, um, he's always like, do we have to live here? I'm like, yes, we have to live here. My family business is here. You knew this before you married me. So, um, yeah. What a he, culture he shock looking. for him. Oh, yeah. Yes. Golly. Yeah. I know the area. I don't know that town, but I mean, my, my in-laws live in Augusta. So we're, you know, oh, we're yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, not far away. Um, so Aiken, yeah, I'm sure you've heard oh, of Aiken. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. So my daughter, main my, town. my daughter did ride horses for a long time. Okay. Yes. And, Big and horse town. We were down there in Aiken um, for yeah. shows and stuff like yep. that. So he's right um, there. Okay. Well, it's beautiful country, but it's very beautiful. different. Uh, I mean, yes, very different culture than, than, than yes. what, what he grew up with um, yeah. from what he is. So how long have y'all been married? Eight years. Where'd y'all, how'd you meet him? Match.com. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my yes. gosh. That's yes. amazing. Well, yeah. I mean, it was funny. And so it was obviously his, I always tell this story because his dad just found out we met on match like a year ago or something <laughs> because it's a small town. They never heard of online. I mean, I mean, I think they would have been a culture shock if they, if he told his parents, um, he was going to, you know, meet somebody online and that's who he ended up marrying. But, um, you know, it's kind of like, how do you meet people these days? It's hard. You know, yeah. you, I always thought maybe in the restaurant, I would have met somebody, but no, he had gotten transferred here for work and he didn't know anybody. And uh, okay. the rest is kind of history. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, yes. I mean, I, I, it will look, I, I'll, I'll get, you know, some, some good, uh, taste bud shot coming up there and trying that. Cause I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely the, uh, you know, like, well, what do you put on the beef? So it sounds awesome. It sounds mouthwatering. Um, and I, look, I, I have to say, I love, 
What's funny, I have this shirt on Brawley Sea Company. So this is my, um, my grandfather started this place up in Mooresville, North Carolina in 1946. And then my uncle ran it and now my cousins run it. And it's just these long decades old family businesses that go from generation to generation to keep these things going. Just, I think it says a lot about your dad you, your family, your customers, your community, because it, that's hard. I mean, that's just, yeah. you know, and there's no promise that the next generation is, you know, is like, I mean, maybe you had to work there when you're young because, you know, like we need the labor or whatever, but like to keep it going like that and, they, you know, to go through all the different economic, I mean, good gosh, all the different economic cycles and a pandemic and, and, to, you know, here we are, you know, 44 years later, 16 locations, and you clearly have a lot of love and passion for what you're doing and for the brand and for your family's business. And it's just so inspiring and so cool. So I just, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say that just, other than just, I mean, just congratulations and please, you know, pass it along to your father. I, th I mean, it's a, what a legacy. Yeah. What a legacy. I think, and there's a lot of pride there. There's, I'm proud of my dad. I'm proud of what he's created. I'm proud of that. It continues to, you know, kind of have that same, you know, 44 years later, have that same feel when you walk into the restaurant, like you kind of like talked about customer experience. And so it's something to be proud of. It really is. And, and thanks to our customers and thanks to the employees for getting us here. I think that, you know, you kind of always point your finger at the one person that keeps it going, but it's not one thing. It's everything. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people that helped us get here. And kind of like you said, not only families, but customers and a lot of employees over the year that have been with us. And so, um, you know, it's just not one person that keeps the restaurant going. It's, it's a team. So we're lucky to have a great team and a, and a really great family that does that. Well, so pop, you know, put in his work, blood, sweat, tears, had an idea, built a business. Yeah. I mean, it's just, as this is the American dream, right? Like, you know, if Absolutely. you, you know, if you're willing to get everything you've got and, and, uh, take a risk and pour yourself into it and, work every day, but four every year. And, you know, and my guess is that dude's never going to stop. Like he's probably going to just like come in every day and, you know, and, and until it's all said and done. So, um, so I, I, what a cool story, what a cool opportunity for us, uh, to share your story. And I thank just, you. oh yeah. I mean, I, I thank you for taking the time to come on here and giving us this chance. And, uh, I, 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 I I'm going to, need to find a way to get to Chicago. Like, you know, I, I can't come just to have pops, but I, I got to figure a way to get up there so that I can have pops. And I, yeah, I, I love I, it. Yeah. You've sold me. You've hooked me. I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm in. Thank you. Awesome. All yep. right. Have a good one. Great Casey. talking to you. You too. All right. See ya. Bye.